Okay, we are starting Unit 9.1. We're on day one through two, solving radical equations. This is where we are. Um, two things that you need to remember in this unit is factoring. So just a reminder, with factoring, we do snowflake. Okay, this is your A times C. This is your B. This is AX, AX. Okay, you're looking for what multiplies to give you this and adds to give you this. You can use the table by putting in the top number divided by x, top number divided by x plus x. And remember, you look for b and y2, and that tells you these numbers. Okay, just a little refresher. Okay. And then you can also, if you hate factoring and you're terrible at factoring, we also just learned the quadratic formula. So guess what? The quadratic formula works the exact same as solving by factoring. So you could use that, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So I'll show you both today during notes so you can decide which method you want to use. Now, will you have to use both? Yeah. No. You get to pick one. They both do the exact same thing. So you pick one of the methods that you like. Yes? Okay. So on example one, um, I'm going to follow the steps. So it says isolate the radical. So my radical is this guy. I'm going to highlight all my radicals. Okay. Is my radical isolated on number one? Like if you look at the left side of the equal sign, is it already by itself? Yes, so step one's done. Step two, make the radical go away. How do I get rid of a cube root? What's the opposite of cube root? To cube. So if I cube this side, I have to cube this side to keep it equal, yes? Well, on the left, your cube root cancels your cube, and you're left with 4x minus 1. And on the right, what's 3 cubed? Don't say 9. 27. 27. And then it says step three, are the radicals gone? Yes, so we get to move on to step four. It says solve and check. So solving, how do I solve this? Plus one. Plus one on both sides. And that leaves me 4x equals 28. Now what? Divide. Divide by four. And I get x equals seven. Now, I'm not done because it does say check. And I will tell you, check is a super important step here because you can get solutions that don't work. Okay, so um, we call those extraneous solutions. Um, so you could get those and you always have to double check, yes? Now, checking is easy. If you can text your friends, which we all know you all do, you can type it in a calculator and check your work. So all you do, is just a reminder, to type in a cube root, you hit math for. So if I come to my calculator to check it, I'm gonna do math for. And I, see I have a cube root, so now I'm going to type 4 times x. Well, what is x? 7. Every time I plug it in, I'm going to use parentheses, minus 1. And when I press enter, what do I want this to equal? 3. Three. Did it work? Yes. yes. So that is my solution, and you're going to see me put my solutions inside the fancy brackets, because that means a set of solutions. Any questions with number 7? I mean, number 1. No. Answer 7. Ha ha. Okay, look at number two. Is my radical isolated? No. No, what does that have with it? Plus five. How do I get rid of plus five? Plus five. Okay, so I get the absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals negative 5. So here's my question. If you ever take the square root of something, will it equal a negative? No. Why not? Yeah, it's going to be imaginary if it's negative, remember? So knowing that, what do I know my answer is right away? Imaginary. Not imaginary. No. Well, yes, yeah, imaginary, but it's no solution. Because your square root will never give you a negative. Now, can a cube root give you a negative? Yes. Yes. Now, if you were to solve this, we would have squared both sides, and we would have gotten 2x plus 3 equals 25. Minus 3, minus 3. I'm going to do it quickly. 2x equals 22. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 11. Okay? 
if I plug in square root of 2 times 11 plus 3 outside of my house plus 5, this should equal 0. Did it work? No. That's why there's no solution. Because the one solution we got didn't work, so it's extraneous. Okay. Now, you could see this written like this with 11 inside parentheses behind it because it's telling you no solution. 11 what worked or is the solution, but it didn't work. Okay. It's your extraneous solution. So look at number three. What do we do? Is my radical alone? No. So what do I need to move? Minus x. Minus x. So when I do minus x, minus x, now is my radical alone? Yes. So what do I do? Uh, give it the square root. By? Uh, square root. Yeah. So if I square this side, I have to square this side as well right? Well, on the left, my square root cancels my square root, and I'm left with x minus 1 equals, well, on this side, you can't just square those two things when you have a minus and plus in the middle. So you have to actually double distribute. So 3 minus x times 3 minus x, this is squared. This is what it means, right? So now I distribute. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative x is negative 3x negative x times 3 is negative 3x. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Now I know that I can rewrite this by combining my like terms, so I get 9 minus 6x plus x squared. Now what's wrong with this right here? It's not in order, so I'm just going to rewrite it over here in order. So x squared minus 6x, and that's a positive 9, so plus 9. Now, this isn't like number one or even the little piece of number two because I have a quadratic. How do we solve quadratics? Well, we talked about two different methods at the top. We can solve by factoring or we can solve by quadratic formula. But either way, with either of those methods, what does my equation have to equal first? Zero. So I need to move both of these because I cannot have a negative x squared. So I'm going to do minus x minus x add 1, add 1. And I get 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. <clears throat> now I can solve my quadratic. I'm going to show you both methods of solving. Again, do you have to do both methods? No. no. However, you need to understand at least one of them. So first I'm going to do factoring. So I need to find my a, my b, and my c. What's a? 1. b? Negative 7. c. 10. a is 1, so I can just put x or 1x either way. a times c, 1 times 10 is 10. b is negative 7. What multiplies to give you 10 and adds to give you negative 7? Negative 2, negative 5. I know they're both negative because two negatives multiply to give you a positive, but don't they also add to give you negative 7? Yes. So this gives me 0 equals x minus 2, x minus 5. Well, I don't know if you remember, but when solving with factoring, you just set them both equal to 0 and solve. Now, we have two solutions. We have three things that can happen. We can have where neither of them work and it's no solution. We can have where one of them works and we have one extraneous solutions, or we can have where both of them work, okay? So we have to check both of them in the original. So I come here and I do x is 2 plus the square root of x minus 1, and this should equal 3. Did it work? Yes. So I know 2 is a solution. So then I could try the other one. So x is 5 plus the square root of 5 minus 1. Did that equal 3? No. No. So I have one solution that works, and then this one does not. So I write this as 2, and then afterwards in parentheses is 5. Now I'm going to show you how to plug this into the quadratic formula.
So quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c. So remember, I always draw by skeleton. a is 1, b is negative 7, c is 10. I personally like to simplify all my pieces before I type in my calculator, but you do you. You could type this just like this if you wanted. So 7 plus the square root of something over 2 times 1 is 2. And this should always work out pretty. You're not going to worry about imaginary here. We're not work worrying about any of those other ones. So negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10. And that equals 9. So now I have plus and minus, sorry. So I separate and solve. So alpha y equals enter 7 plus the square root of 9 over 2. And I get 5. Second enter change that plus to a minus, and I get 2. Is that the exact same thing I got when factoring? Yeah. So does it matter which method you use? Pick your poison. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, flip to the back. Two more. Ah! Throwing pins. Okay. <laughs> now, you'll notice that both of these have way more than one radical. One of them has two, one of them has three. The one that you want to get by yourself is the one that has the most oomph in it, the one that has the most terms. So this one has two terms, that has one term, one term. So we want to get this one by itself. So knowing that, look at example five, which one do you want to get by yourself? 2x plus 5 or just 2x? Yeah, because this one has the most. So 2x plus 5. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's start with example four. We are going to, well, it's already alone. So what do I do now? How do I get rid of this radical? I understand there are two there, but we're focusing on this mm -hmm. one. We square it. It's already square root. So the opposite is squaring. If I square that side, I have to square this side. Well, on the left, the square root cancels the squared, and I'm left with x minus 6 equals. Well, on this side, what do I have to do? I have to double distribute because there's two terms, and they're in different houses. You can't just cancel. What was that? Don't put anything there. Sorry. So do you all remember double distributing, just like we did on the front, except this has ugly stuff. Now, the rule with radicals, when you're multiplying, if both of them are in the house, guess what? You can combine them. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, what's 2 times 2? Four. It's just the square root of 4. Do you all see what I'm saying? So it's just it's the same thing as what we did on the front. You're just adding the house over it. So the square root of 2 times the square root of x, well, don't forget, positive times a negative, so this is going to be minus. And what's 2 times x? 2x. Yeah. And because they were both in the house, they both stay in the house. Negative square root of x times square root of 2 is, again, negative. Negative times positive is negative. And then x times 2 is just 2x. Now, negative square root of x times negative square root of x. Two negatives may say? Positive. And what's x times x? x squared. So this is what we get. Well, this does simplify. What's the square root of 4? 2. 2. How many of these do I have? Two, and they're both negative. You could put a 1 in front. That doesn't change anything. So negative 1 minus 1. Now you have negative 2 square root of 2x. Those are not, you can't simplify the square root of 2x. And then what happens here? Cancels. Yeah, the square root cancels the square and you're left with x. Now to rewrite this in order, you're just going to move your x to the front. So you get x positive 2 minus 2 root 2x. So now look at example four. What I want you to realize is on our notes, we just did, all, as of right now, all we've done is step one and step two. Then step three says, are all the radicals gone? Are all of my radicals gone? No, no I, have a, I have one more. So guess what it tells us to do? Here. Start over. So now we start over at step one where it says isolate the radical. How do I get this radical by itself? Not yet. It's not by. I have to get it below, alone before I try to square anything. You do not want to try to square this. I have to move all this other stuff to the other side. So what do I want to move first? X. Okay, so minus x, minus x. What happens there? Uh, they both zero. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. So now I have negative six equals 
2 minus 2 root 2x. Now what do I need to move? 2. The positive 2. How do I move that positive 2? I get negative 8 equals negative 2 root 2x. Now what do I do? Is my radical alone yet? No. no. What does it still have? How do I get rid of that negative 2? Not adding because what's happening in, in the middle? It's multiplying. There's no symbol, so we're multiplying. How was opposite of multiplying? So I get positive 4 equals the square root of 2x. Is my square root now alone? So step two, back to step two, get rid of the radical. How do I get rid of it? Square, Square both sides. This I get 16 equals positive 2x because the square root canceled the squared. And my last step. Divide. I get x equals 8. Am I done? No, we gotta check it. I got to check it. So I get the square root of 8 minus 6. And it gives me an ugly decimal, and that's fine as long as the other side gives me the same ugly decimal. So now I'm going to type the other side. So square root of 2 out from under the house minus square root of 8. Bless you. Bless Do they equal? No. No. So what's my answer? No solution. No solution. All that work to see With an extraneous 8. I know that's a lot of work to get a no solution. But it is what it is. Womp womp. Last one. Is my highlighted radical alone? No. So what do I need to do? Get rid of that two. And I get the absolute value of two, not the absolute value, good lord, what am I saying? The square root of 2x plus 5 equals 3 minus the square root of 2x. What do I do? By how? Um, I square it. Square, yeah. What I do to one side, I have to do the whole other side as well. So square root cancels the square root. I get 2x plus 5 equals, well, again, I have to distribute this. Now, I have outside numbers and inside numbers, so this is a little different. Outside numbers can multiply by outside numbers. Inside numbers can multiply with inside numbers, but outside and inside cannot be combined. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so knowing that, if I do 3 times 3, we know that's just 9. Because those are both outside numbers. 3 times negative 2 square root of x. Well, that's an outside number. That's an inside number. So can we combine those? No. No, so it literally just becomes... This is like saying 1. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 root 2x. So same concept here. It's like a 1. So negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 root 2x. Two negatives makes a positive. And what's 2x times 2x? 4x squared. Yep. No, it's just humans. Okay, so I bring down my 9 because there's nothing to combine it with. These are like terms. What's negative 3 minus 3? Negative, negative 6. And then here, what's the square root of 4? 2. And what's the square root of x squared? 2x. Yeah, because the, x, the square root cancels the squared for the x. So again, I'm going to move this to the front to put it in order so it becomes 2x plus 9 minus 6 square root of 2x. Are we done? No. No, because what's wrong? You gotta move the to the other side. Because I still have a radical, I have to go back to step 1, which says isolate the radical. So how do I get that by itself? Move, the other side. move what? The two, the okay, so let's do minus 2x on both sides. And what happens? Cancels. They both cancel. Now what else do I need to move? The 9. So how do I get rid of a plus 9? Minus 9. And I get negative 4 equals negative 6 square root of 2x. Divide the 6. 
Divide both sides by negative 6. And the negatives cancel. 4 over 6 simplifies to 2 over 3, which you could do in your calculator if you need to. Now is my radical alone. Yes. Thank God. Okay, so knowing that, what do we do? Square, square both sides. Square root cancels the squared. And on the right, I have 2x. On the left, y'all, you just square it. So what's 2 squared? 4. And what's 3 squared? There you go. Now, what's your last step? Divide by 2. Yes, but dividing division is weird. Yes? Dividing a fraction. So you could technically do divide 2, divide 2, but I want you to know that dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. Do you all know that? Hold on one second. Okay, so knowing that, if you type this in your calculator, you get 4 over 9... A time, uh, you could do divide 2 or times 1 half and it's going to give you the same thing and you get 2 ninths. So I get x equals 2 ninths. So what's our last step? Check it. Check it. Um, I'm just going to type mine as a division. So I get the square root of 2 times 2 divide 9 plus 5 under the house. Then I come out from under the house. I hit plus the square root of 2 and again 2 divided by 9. And what should this equal? Four over nine. Three. Did it work? Oh, three. Yes. So my answer, no, not parentheses, two over nine. Why not parentheses? If I use parentheses, what am I saying? It's, it's not that it's not a solution. I would be saying there's no solution. Oh, one more thing. On your practice, I want you to change number five where it says x plus two. I want you to change it to an eight. Yeah. yeah. And then don't stress out. I feel like number one, y'all are already stressed out. What do you do? You gotta um, put the plus x. Yeah, well, you could do minus x on both sides, right? Um, then both sides are negative. Can you just divide both sides by negative one to get rid of the negative? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so don't, don't stress yourself out.